All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're going to do something before we get started and into the lesson today. We are every day surrounded by a little bit of chaos of our world. Anxieties are high. Life is difficult. Satan tries to come at us in different ways. And I feel like it's a distracting thing to keep us from seeing him and knowing him and seeing each other. So what we're going to do is just take a moment. If you could. We're going to, don't fall asleep though, because now I come with a loud noise later. We're going to close our eyes for a minute. We're going to just take a couple deep breaths together, just to center ourselves and to know that God is with us this morning and that we can have comfort and peace in him. So let's just do this together. Let's breathe in through our nose and out our mouths. Let's do that again. Through our nose. And Father, we are so grateful to gather before you from, to open your word, to learn more about you, to edify one another, to be encouraged. God, we are thankful that as our world is constantly changing, you do not, and that we can find comfort in knowing that our foundation in you shall not be shook by this world, man. In Christ your son's name, amen. Over the last couple weeks, we have been looking at a series called, uh, the old is gone, I'm learning to put on a new self. We last week started the journey looking at Moses and how his old self got in the way of seeing what God had for him. And even to the point of where God was calling him through a burning bush, he had nothing but excuses of why he wasn't the right person. A lot of times in our lives, we are that excuse. And God calls us to do some good and great things. And sometimes those good and great things are just being present for somebody else, but we have the excuses because somewhere in our lives, we have internalized why we are not the guy or girl for the job. And God reminded Moses over and over and over again that he is with him, that he is God, that am I not the one who created you? Will I not give you the words to say, just go? And it led to the point of him saying, I'll send your brother with you. So now you have no more excuses. I need you to go out and do these things for me. Today we're going to be looking at this, this journey that Moses has of becoming a new self in God, from being somebody who didn't know his identity, right? He was raised in Pharaoh's house, but he was a Hebrew. He saw Egyptians treating his Hebrew brothers wrong. He killed one of them, hit him in the sand. Next thing you know, he's getting arguments with his own people, and they say, what are you going to do, kill us too? They don't trust him because he hasn't had to suffer like they had. They don't know him. He's living somewhere else. Moses just wants to fit in somewhere, and he finds that in running away, and God now has called him back. Now through this journey, and we're going to get to a story of how we see Moses progress, but I want to give us a journey, cliff note version. Do me a favor, go back, read through Exodus. That way you can, you can make sure, fact check me, it's always good. Moses goes through this journey, he goes before Pharaoh, delivers these plagues, Pharaoh is gets furious, but then by the last plague where now firstborn sons are, are, are dying, he relents and he says, go take your people out of here. As he watches them leave, he realizes, wait a second, those, that was my workforce. He gets angry and his heart's all hard and chases them. God splits the sea. Well, before we get there, Israelites complain a lot. So just think about how this would affect you if your mode of operation is, I don't know if I'm good enough. And every time somebody wants to tell you something, it's like, Moses, what are you doing? Was there not enough graves in Egypt? You took us out here to die. And then God separates the sea. And God provides over and over and over again. And they get there. Pharaoh dies behind them. They're running through. Now, through this journey of walking through the wilderness before they can get into a promised land, it takes all of this time to continually transform Moses from his old ways to a brand new person. And I want you to just know that every time we're looking at putting on a new self in Christ, if you hope and are thinking that it's going to change the moment you pop out of the water in acceptance of baptism, that's not how this journey works. If that was the case, it wouldn't be a journey. The journey of understanding that we are created new is allowing yourself to be created new each and every day by the goodness of God, by transforming your mind. You put off your old self and to be created new the image of Christ as we've accepted him as our savior. And that journey 
doesn't just come and one day you're like, I got it all figured out. No more for me to learn. I just got it. Instead, we will be learning until the day God calls us home. And it was the same for Moses. Moses would get angry. Moses doesn't even get to get into the promised land at the very end because of that anger, because of all the things that he just didn't trust God fully. However, he'll also be known as the most humble man that's ever walked the earth. He'll be known as a friend of God. So somewhere in this journey, we see him really start to get it and pick it up. Now, because it's such a long book and this whole series wasn't about Moses, which I could have made it, I'm just going to hit some points and we're going to get into the topic of today. So Moses on this journey of leading the Israelites to the promised land faced a few different difficult things. One, the Israelites were always called stiff-necked people. Um, as somebody who has a very stiff neck, I don't know if that's the same. It's just annoying for me. So I wonder if that's what it means. These are just annoying people. They have a hard time following what God wants them to do. They continually look around to find something else to fill a void and not trust that God has them. One of these examples was when Moses goes up Mount Sinai and he sits with God and starts to write the tablets. And Moses had been gone for a little while. And while he's gone, Israelites start to get impatient. And in their impatience, they start to think, maybe God doesn't have this completely. Maybe God needs some help. So Aaron, his brother, who God sent with them, which I told you before, when we don't trust God and God has to give us something to allow us to go, which is giving us what we feel like we need, he's going to use those things to teach us some lessons sometimes too. So Aaron comes in and says, all right, everybody, give me your gold. We're going to melt this down. We're going to make a golden calf. Golden calf was a god, one of the gods the Egyptians worship. So they're bringing in some of this old stuff again. Even though God has been leading them by a pillar of a smoke and a pillar of fire by night, they know that God's there. They still have a very difficult time trusting that this God is leading them to where he promises them. So instead they go, all right, we're going to make this golden calf. And no, no, we still believe that God's there. We just think he needs some help. And Moses comes back and he's so angry that he throws the tablets and they shatter. He gets the golden calf and he burns it and crushes it into dust and puts it in water and makes all of them drink it. Which, it's a cool story. I'm just going to throw it out there. It's a crazy story. And God does some weird punishment here. So if you go back and look, he says, who's with me, who's with God, and Levites come, and they go and they kill like 3,000 people, of their own people. And then God does his own judgment, even more so later, and gives half of them a disease. Man, it's crazy, crazy stuff. But in all of this journey, God could have destroyed them and wanted to at one point, and Moses steps up and says, well, no, 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 don't do that yet. Remember your promise? Like, like Moses is starting to learn some things. He's starting to bring it in. But the best story that I could give you of how we know that Moses' heart has changed from one that reacts out of anger to one that is more patient and kind, one that is more in tune with God, comes from Numbers. But before we get that, I just want you to know this verse is important for me. In, in Exodus 33, 11, we've already talked about Moses kind of having some issues. But Moses got to do something that nobody else in scripture got to do. Moses would speak with the Lord face to face as one would speak to a friend. And, and I just think that this is very important for us to understand. Even to the point where God says, I'm actually going to reveal myself to you. You can't see my face because you died, but I'll shade your face, I'll walk by you, and you can see me. Nobody else gets to do this. Moses gets to be in a relationship with God because he's learning to just trust who God is. God, you're going to send me. I'm going to be your guy. I don't want to be to whatever you want. I'm here for it. And I think this might be our journey too. You might be afraid. You might have turned down some opportunities that God has for you. You might be afraid to step into something because your old past keeps telling you you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You don't look the part. Nobody will trust you. They won't believe you. I don't have the skills to do it. And ultimately, God, I don't want to do it. Come on. But at the end of the day, if we lean into what God has for us, what he's calling us to do, we too will be known as a, fr a friend of God. Our faith will go before us. Our righteousness will go before us. And when we cry out to God, he'll say, here I am. Okay, so here's the story. In the book of Numbers, 
chapter 12, we're going to read this whole chapter. This is a wild event, uh, and maybe many of you might be able to relate to this, maybe not. Moses has a brother and sister. The brother's Aaron, the sister's Mary. Moses, at this point, is going to marry a Cushite woman. A lot of people think the Cushites were from about Ethiopia, um, and I think his brother and sister had a really hard time with the idea of Moses marrying somebody uh, that was different, maybe different in race, uh, maybe different background, all the different things. And because of their anger, they started to spread some lies about Moses. And God doesn't get happy with them. And we're going to see how Moses could react based on his old self versus how Moses does react on being created new and what God has for him. Okay, so let's read this together. This is going to be one of those stories where you might look around and think differently uh, about your siblings if this is what they're doing. Okay. Mary and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, and he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? They asked. Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Okay. You ever, just gonna go ahead. You ever been with people who you think got your back? Yeah. Only to find out what they really have is their own back and they're trying to push themselves in front of you? Yeah. And you thought they were your friend, maybe even your brother or sister, but at the end of the day, they couldn't wait to trample on you. Moses had a brother and a sister who weren't so uh, innocent throughout their journey. Aaron wasn't even invited to this party in the beginning, but instead, God says, Aaron will speak through you, and I, for you, and I will speak to you. There is nothing coming out of Aaron except for what Moses is sharing with him. And what Moses shared with him is coming from God. But Aaron doesn't see it this way because when you are in front of people and you have a platform, people are listening to you. And you got into already do some wild stuff, right? Melt down some gold, do all these other things. Aaron, I think, thought a little more highly of himself. And because of that, and because of what he didn't like in his brother, he started to spread the rumors. Can you imagine? Did you see what my brother just did? He just married that woman. Can you imagine that? Is, is God even with him? Isn't God through us too? Well, God hears these things. God is not, he's not happy. But verse 3 comes in. And I always am a little skeptical of when I read scripture about somebody who's written by themselves because Moses is writing Exodus. So it'd be like if I wrote a book and in my book I wrote that Gavin is the most humble person on earth. I think it gets a little sketchy. But anyways, I'm going to say this is still God inspired. Moses was very humble, a very humble man. Yes. More humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. This was not Moses in the book prior to. So in his journey, he at least has gotten to a point where God feels this way, or, or maybe Moses at least feels this way about himself. And that's okay. He went from, I'm not the man, I'm not good enough, they won't listen to me, to I'm a very humble person. That I can come, that for me, that means I can listen, I can sit, I can put myself lesser than, than other people so I can hear their their complaints or whatever. At once, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three went out. The tent of meeting was established by Moses. Moses pitched the tent out, out in, in, of the village. This is where he and God would come together and talk. This is where that whole face-to-face -face thing would come in. Not everybody was loud here. A whole cloud would come down, and everybody in the whole village would know that Moses is talking to God. And when this would happen, they would just sit in the opening of their tent and just worship and pray because they know that now God is present. So, you ever been called to the principal's office? You ever get in trouble before? Yep. Has your mom ever said, come here, or dad? I feel like this is one of those times where they got drugged by the ear to come into the tent of meeting and God isn't happy. So the three of them went. The Lord came down in the pillar of a cloud and he stood at the entrance of the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, listen to my words. I've had this said to me before. Uh, and whenever this happens, usually my head drops because I know I'm about to get it. Especially when I was a kid and got in a lot of trouble. It was this thing, hey, come here. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. And this usually means if you don't do what I'm about to tell you, things are going to go bad for you really quick. I think I brought this over to my own 
kids and they just laugh and they go to their mom and she gives them the business. And that's, you know, that's just as good. It's just as good as well. He says, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. I want you to hear how God talks about Moses. He is faithful in all of my house. With him, I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Man, I just... Yeah, I want, if we just could go back. A love for Moses, I mean, he was there. But just to hear this for ourselves, right? Moses isn't the guy for you to be doing this to. Not because of who Moses is, but because of who I am and who I am and how I view my servant Moses. This is my friend. This is somebody that I enjoy being with. He is faithful. We talk together. We have conversation. Not like when I talk to you guys. This is different. Why are you not afraid of talking about my friend? Now, what's interesting here is back in Moses' old time, I think Moses would be a person who would seek revenge. We've seen him kind of be an impulsive guy. Oh, you can do this against me? I'll do this against you. I'm going to seek out my own vengeance to make this right. But he understands now his place and who God is and who he serves can handle himself. And I can be faithful and present and allow God to do his work even amongst my enemies because I know who I serve and I know who he is and the power that he brings. Why are you not afraid to talk about my friend Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left the room. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous and became white as snow. And Aaron turned toward her and saw that she had defiling skin disease. I want to clarify some things here. It would be really easy to say, why does God have something against women? Why does he mess with Aaron here? Aaron is such a jerk in this story. In all of the stories, Aaron is kind of there. Here's something that we just got to know about God. God keeps some promises. And part of the promise of Moses was Aaron. It's kind of weird to think of it like this. But if you go to other stories in the Bible, like Jacob and Esau, Jacob is not the best guy in the story. Esau seems like he should be a better option, but Esau is kind of done and gave up his birthright. So Jacob kind of comes in. But God's plan was not through Esau, it was through Jacob. So even all of Jacob's mishaps and deceitfulness, it wasn't a reward for Jacob. It was God's plan to do what he wanted to do for his people. And even sometimes that's going to go through some people that doesn't look appropriate for him. Because the plan just isn't always to make sense for us people. That's a side note. Miriam gets this issue because God's angry against both of them. But now Moses, because he's a changed person, doesn't sit there and say, Ha! That's what you get! Stop talking about me. Pull the Will Smith right there, right? Keep my name out your mouth. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. Instead, he has compassion for his sister. And the compassion for his sister is going to change his sister. Does she deserve to get the punishment that she... Yeah, she does. She should have been doing what she was doing. But the difference is Moses. So here's what Aaron does. Aaron says to Moses, please, my Lord, I ask you not to hold against us the sin that we have so foolishly committed. Maybe he already saw what happened to his sister and he doesn't want it to happen to him, so he's going to speak up. Don't let her be like a stillborn infant coming from his mother's womb with his flesh half eaten away. So Moses cried out to the Lord, please God, heal her. If anybody else made this prayer for Miriam, I don't think she was going to get healed. Just don't. I could be wrong. I think Moses comes and speaks to God in a way that says, have mercy on my sister. She deserves this, but have mercy. And God does. He gives it to her. It 
does it in a way that says she still disgraced us and she needs to go out and she can come back later when she's got herself together. Her father's been in her face, would she not have been a disgrace for seven days? That just means she did something wrong in the family. I don't know why they would do it that way. It sounds kind of gross. But that's how they handle business then. Confine her outside the camp seven days. After that, she can be brought back in. They didn't do anything. They didn't leave. They didn't go anywhere until she was back. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move, so she was brought back. I just want us to think of this story. And the reason I brought this one up out of everything is the biggest hurts in our lives can come from people that we love. Yeah. And usually the hurt that we operate in starts from people that we love. Our pain can be built by words that we receive from people that we thought were on our side, but instead they made us feel a different way about who we are. And we learn to operate out of those hurts. And when we operate out of those hurts, we make decisions that aren't the best decisions, and usually they bring hurt to other people. Come on. And as we learn to navigate to God and how He sees us as He created us in His image, but also to be different, this is when we start to learn how to live as Christ calls us to Him. And He gives us so many other things. See, before we're, we're before we know Christ, we're led by our flesh and all the desires that it wants, the instant gratification, and it could be in anything, addiction, uh, you know, inappropriate relationships. We can struggle in what we put into our eyes, be it pornography or other things that keep us looking and wanting something that we don't have because we're envious or we're comparing ourselves. We have all these things that are driving us. But as we start to learn to walk and step and live with Christ, we start to learn a different way. We start to walk in the Spirit. We start to have this fruit that is being built within us that to be you know, loving and joyous and have peace and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control, and we see all of those things coming out of Moses within this one little tiny story of his very <laughs> long history of walking his people from Egypt to the Promised Land. That when he needs to be patient, he can be. When he needs to show mercy, he tries his best to do so. When peace isn't earned, he tries to grant it because he wants to be a non-anxious presence amongst all of his people so that they too can trust that God is in control. And this is how we can handle situations. We may have been hurt. We may have been told so many different things about who you are. But I promise you, when you start to walk in step with what Christ has for you, you will be different. And if you aren't, I want you to check on your relationship with God. Yeah. Christ loves us too much to, to let us stay the same but he'll accept us where we're at and he'll bring us in and we'll be embraced but we will never be allowed to stay the same if we're in the presence of Jesus and Moses was the same you know what I love for stories about that every time he went and talked to God he would come out and his face would be radiant and they would know that he talked to God so much so that he would have to cover it until he went back in again we are changed when we allow God to move us in the direction that he calls us to. Yeah. That our old self, when it wants to come out and vomit out so quickly because that's just how we learn to operate when we feel insecure about ourselves, when we feel hurt, instead we can learn to operate in a way of peace and gratitude that comes from God. And we see this here. And we're going to look at some other stories where people might not have taken that advantage of what God has for them and they chose a different route. But we need to see that too, because we have to see if our pain is unchecked, we will never be able to live in peace with God. We will constantly be driven down in our pain to a point where our relationship is so hard to have. We kind of saw that with Pharaoh in the story. He couldn't get himself to see who God was because he was too bent on being bitter and resentful and angry. We're going to talk about what that looks like next time. Moving forward, this is our challenge for today as we leave, is... What are the steps that I'm allowing God to take? Like, Romans tells us to not conform to the world, but to have our minds transformed. Right? To be transformed through Christ by the renewing of our mind. Yeah. And that comes from daily devotion with Him. Through His Word, through prayer, through encouraging one another. And as we do that, we'll start to see those changes. How are you doing that? Are you doing that? Is it worth your time and your busy day to step in and to be made new of what Christ has for you? Let's go to God and pray after this. We're going to have a song of invitation. For anybody who has needs or prayers for the church, let's pray together.
Dear Father, you are an amazing God. Thank you for your patience for us. God, I pray that you help us to move forward with that Holy Spirit working within us, that we can see you daily, your comfort, your provisions, your joy. And God, I pray that we can navigate this world that we think is so long, but it's just a blip on the scale of eternity. God, I just pray that you give us the courage and motivation to move forward in ways that are different to show that peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control to all those who are around us, but more importantly, just as for us to carry ourselves in that way, that others may know who you are by the way we live our lives to bring glory to your name and to your kingdom. We're so grateful for your son and praise in his name. Amen. Amen. If you're outside of Christ, we'd like to take him on baptism. We're going to stay and sing a song of invitation. You come forward and love to talk with you. If you'd like to talk to your elder in the back for any needs or prayers, Mark is back there. He'd love to talk with you. I pray with you as well. Let's stand as we sing this next song.